In this video, we're going to solve one of the greatest challenges of AI cold callers. How to go from making 100 calls a day to making 6,000 or more without getting blacklisted as spam. Today, we're building this professional and scalable cold calling machine right here in NADN. I'm going to give you the complete playbook from the non-negotiable steps for trust and reputation, all the way up to this three workflow system that will automatically manage things like concurrency and number rotation to ensure that your campaign runs flawlessly all day long. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, first things first. If you're using a basic workflow like this that just gets your leads and then makes one call one at a time, you need to stop right now. This type of system does not manage concurrency and it'll never reach the type of scale that you need for your campaigns. It's literally like sending one soldier out at a time just to get annihilated like North Korea does. So what you need instead is a three-part system that's going to manage your concurrency. First, we have a campaign manager. This is like our ignition switch to our entire program. It's going to run every morning, grab the leads for today, get the available phone numbers, and then merge them together so that the first 10 leads are matched with the first 10 available phone numbers. And then it's going to kick off the first batch of calls. After that, we have a second workflow called the single caller. This workflow is going to be solely responsible for making every one of those calls to each of those leads. And finally, this is where the magic happens. This is called the post call handler. After each of one of those calls ends, this is going to basically listen for that information and then go ahead and grab the next lead, grab the next phone number and go ahead and kick off the next call. And this is exactly how we're going to manage concurrency, making sure that every single line is being maxed out as much as possible. And we're gonna track the number of calls that we're making so that our campaign can end when we want it to end. Now, before we touch a single node in NADN, we need to talk about the most important part of the entire process, trust and reputation. You could have the best AI in the entire world and it wouldn't mean a thing if your numbers are getting labeled as spam likely. Let's dive right into it. The first aspect is called stir shaken. This is like a digital passport for your calls. You're going to register your business with your voice provider, such as Twilio, and they're going to give you your A-level attestation which is basically going to say, this person is verified. We're going to let their calls not be labeled as spam. Number two, CNAM or caller name. This is what makes your business name show up on the caller ID so that when you cold call somebody on their phone, they're going to see your business name. And as you can probably imagine, that's going to greatly increase their chances of picking up of the phone, which is going to increase your chances of your conversion rate going up and decrease the chances of you being labeled as spam. So it's very important. Finally, we have number three, caller reputation databases. They power the spam filtering for millions of devices. So all you do is register with these caller reputation databases. And again, it's going to decrease the chances that you get labeled as spam. This is the ultimate outbound AI calling stat sheet. It's very important for keeping your numbers healthy and working. The first thing is the daily call limit per number of 100 calls. The number pool size equals the number of daily calls divided by 100. So for example, if you're trying to make 6,000 calls every day, 6,000 divided by 100 equals 60 phone numbers. The default concurrency is 10. You can always purchase more if you need it. Target answer rate is greater than 20%. Target average call duration is greater than 30 seconds. The warm-up period is 10 days. That means that on day one, we're gonna make 10 phone calls. Day two, we're gonna make 20 phone calls. And slowly, we're gonna build up to the 100 calls a day. Next, our reputation setup lead is four weeks. Finally, we need to make sure that our stir shaken attestation goal is A level. That's gonna give us the highest chances of staying off that spam likely list. Now that we understand trust and reputation, let's dive right into the build. This is workflow number one, the campaign manager. It starts with a scheduled trigger node. I set it to 9 a.m. You can change it to whatever time that you want. After that, we use a set variables node. This is where you're going to input your API key your concurrency, and your leads to call today. Your API key is going to be from Vabi. Just go to API keys here on the left, copy your private API key, go back over here and just paste it in. Max concurrency is going to be defaulted at 10. You can always purchase more if you need it. The number of leads to call today is going to be equal to how many leads you want to call today. You can set it equal to 6,000, 10,000, whatever you want. Just for today's demo, I'm going to set it to two. Next, we're going to use a Google Sheets node. This is important for getting the information from our leads sheet so that we can go ahead and contact them. 
we're going to only be interested in the ones that have a status of not contacted yet. If you haven't already, go ahead and create a Google Sheet that looks something like this. It's going to have all your leads, it's going to have these columns, and it's going to have the information about the lead. This is really important because it's going to get passed into our AI voice agent so that it can hyper-personalize the sales call and maximize your conversion rates. The two rows, like I said earlier, that we're interested in are going to be these because they have a status of not contacted yet. These are going to be the ones that are going to get used later on in our workflow. Let's go and going back to over to NADN. Our next node is a limit node. Here, we're just going to limit the number of calls that we're going to make equal to what we said that we we're going to call earlier. So in this case, let's say like 6,000, for example, right? After that, we're going to use a Google Sheet node. This is going to be responsible for tagging the leads to today. Basically, what that means is we're going to get those 6,000 rows. We're going to change the call status equal to queued because that means that it's just in the queue and it's getting ready to get called. After that, we're going to change the campaign date to today's date. And the point of this is that we're keeping track of what's going to get called today. And then tomorrow, we're not going to look at these anymore because since the status is no longer not contacted yet, we're not going to call those, right? We're going to call only the ones that are scheduled to say queued. All right. After that, we're going to also get available phone numbers. Now, this is important for making sure that we're only getting the phone numbers that are active. So going back over to Google Sheets, we're going to need another sheet. I've called it number database. But basically, you're going to have to enter in your phone number ID, your Twilio phone number, when it was last used, call count today, and the status. And this is basically just going to be where you store all of your phone numbers so that you're making sure that you're only calling out of phone numbers that have a call count today of less than 100. Because like we said earlier, we can't do more than 100 calls per phone number in order to stay healthy. So going back over to NADN, here is a rate limiting node. This basically just filters for phone numbers that have a call count today of less than 100. So it, it automatically handles this. If the phone number has equal to or more than 100 calls made today, it's not going to use it. So that's how we basically handle rate limiting. Now, after we've done both of those, we're going to use a merge node in order to merge the leads and the numbers together. So just to illustrate this, let's say that we take 6,000 leads, right? And then we have 60 phone numbers. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to match the first 60 with the first 6,000, right? And that's what we're going to do here. But obviously, since our max concurrency is probably not 60, it might be something like 10 or 20, we're going to use a limit node, which is what this is. We're going to limit the initial batch. And then this is where we basically set it equal to our max concurrency. So let's say that's 10, for example. We're going to start using only the 10 first numbers and the 10 first leads in order to make the first calls. Our last node is going to be an execute sub workflow node. This is going to execute the single caller workflow. That workflow looks like this. It's going to just use another configuration node. Here, we're going to get our VAPI assistant ID over from VAPI. So once you've created your assistant, you've set your things like your model, you've pasted in your system prompts, go over to under here, under the name, you're going to see this long ID. Let's go ahead and click this copy sign a couple of times. Go back over to NADN, Control A, Control C, and there it is, all pasted in and finished. After that, we're going to use an HTTP request node, which is going to make the call from the VAPI server. Finally, this is our post call handler workflow. It looks exactly like this, and this is what's going to help us manage things like concurrency and making sure that we're using number rotation. So, as I said earlier, it's going to look something like this, but at the very end, we're going to integrate it with our existing appointment setter workflows. So, it's actually going to look something like this. And the way that this works is, if the name of the message is going to be called end of call report, then we're going to route the workflow over here and we're going to use the post call handler workflow. Now, the way that this works is as soon as the call is ended from the VAPI side, VAPI is going to send a report and that's how we're going to know that we're going to need to do this part of the workflow. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to use a Google Sheet note and we're going to update the lead status so that it's going to say something like completed. And that's just going to tell us that, yeah, our campaign is completed and we can just go ahead and move on to the next lead. After that, we're going to use another Google Sheet node. This one's going to be getting the current phone usage. And basically what it does is it's going to fetch the information that's related to the phone number ID. So remember over here in the number database, it's basically going to look at the phone number ID and it's going to get the number for the call count today so that we can increment it, basically plus one. That's going to help us track the number of calls that have been made today. So 
if we go back over to here, we can basically see that our next one is going to say update phone number usage. So click in here. As you can see, we're just going to update the last used timestamp. And then we're going to say uh, current phone usage plus one. So that's basically what I said earlier. Next, we're going to use a number four, get next queued lead Google Sheet Note. So as I said earlier, we're going to set all of those leads equal to queued so that we can find the next one easily. So we're just going to filter in and we're going to find the next one that has a status of queued. After that, we're going to look for if a lead is found because if let's say that this is the very last lead that we're going to call, then it's going to say that there is no lead found. So this is where it's going to basically stop the workflow. So if a lead is found, we're going to continue and say update lead to in progress. So we're just going to take it and we're just going to set the call status to in progress. Pretty simple. And the point of that is just to just to keep track of what's being called, what's being queued, so on and so forth. If we don't use this, then basically you're probably going to have two lines calling the same number at the same time because the status is queued, right? So we need to change the status to something else so that we basically have enough states that we can manage it properly. Next, we're going to use a node that gets the next phone number. We're only interested in the phone numbers that have a status equal to active because sometimes if you have a phone number that's bad or unhealthy, you're going to change the value to something other than active so that we're not using that phone number anymore. So then once that we have our phone numbers, we're going to use a filter node and we're going to only filter for the ones that have a call count that is less than 100. Because as I said earlier, if the call count is greater than 100, then we're not going to use it anymore. And then we're going to limit it to only the first item because that means that we're only going to make calls from that first phone number after that we're just going to send that phone number over to our single caller so that it can go ahead and make that next call and that's basically how it works obviously we're going to need also a appointment setter section to it which is what this is responsible for if the type of a message is a tool call then we're going to go down here and we're going to route it based on if it's a check availability tool call or if it's in book appointment tool call and then it's just going to do that like we like i've been teaching you in the rest of my tutorials so now that NADN is done, let's talk about VAPI. VAPI.ai. Now, first thing to do is go ahead and create our assistant. Create assistant. Setup's pretty simple. Just go ahead and set the model to 4.1 mini. First message mode is assistant speaks first with model generated message. To save time, go ahead and download the system prompt from my files. It's going to be called cold caller prompt template. Control A, Control C, Control A, Control V. And as you can see here, we're just going to give some configuration like the business name, things like that. And like I said earlier, we're going to use things like customer's name, the customer's company, and customer's title in order to hyper-personalize this sales call to make it really highly converting. After that's done, we're going to need to create some tools. So as you can see, there are no tools yet created. We're going to have to create them first. Go ahead and hit publish to save. And then go ahead and hit create new tool. I've already created them here, but you won't have these. So you're going to need to hit create new tool. Then you're going to hit create tool, custom tool. First tool is going to be called check availability and then parameters. Click on visual editor. Go ahead and get the file. It's going to be called check availability.json. Control A, Control C, Control V, paste. As you can see, we're collecting an initial search date and time. Go ahead and hit save. And there you go. Again, I've already done it, so I don't need it. Same thing with the book appointment, just hit create new tool, custom tool, call it book appointment, go down to parameters, get the code from over here. Same thing, it's pretty simple guys, so you guys can do this. So once that's done, all we need to do is go back over to assistance, scroll down to the tool section, click on select tools, click on select all, because these, we're gonna need to give it the tool tools that we created, click on publish, and that is done. Now, last thing to do here is scroll down to the messaging section. This is where we're going to connect and it end with VABI. So we're gonna to need to get our URL. Go back over to the appointment setter, double click on over here. We're gonna to need to get the production URL, click on production URL, copy this real quick, go back over to VABI, paste. Now go down to the server messages, select all twice, click on the tool calls and the end of call report because that's all that we need for this. Go ahead and hit publish and that is all done. Now, all we need to do is import our phone numbers from Twilio. So head over to the phone number section, and then you're just going to hit create phone number, import Twilio, and you're going to type in your phone number here that you've bought from Twilio. And then you're going to need to enter your Twilio API key and your Twilio auth token. Now you're going to get these from Twilio. So go over to Twilio. And then once you signed in, you can go ahead and click on phone numbers to go ahead and buy your phone number. 
and then you're going to get your SID and your auth token from over here. So now that everything is set up, all there's left to do is go ahead and see if it works. I'm going to leave it on this page so that you can basically watch the call status get updated as it's working. But in order to get it to start, typically for you guys, you would probably just set this to active, which means that it would automatically start every day at 9 a.m. or whatever. But for me, just to make sure that it starts immediately, I'm just going to click on execute workflow. Hi, Anthony. This is Anthony calling from Apex Agent System. I know this call is out of the blue. You have a minute? Yeah, what's up, Anthony? Great, thanks. The reason for my call is that we help companies like uh, Apex Agent Systems to reduce their sales cycle by 25%. Um, often, when I speak with other CEOs, they mention challenges like inconsistent lead flow or sales reps spending too much time on manual data entry. Is either of those a priority for you right now? Yeah, I said they are. That makes sense. Based on that, it seems like uh, it could be useful to explore this further. Uh, would you be open to a short follow-up call uh, to dive deeper on whether this could be a fit? Sure, yeah. Let's. Can you guys uh, do next Friday or this Friday? Great. To get started, would you prefer this Friday or next Friday for the follow-up call? Let's do this Friday, actually. Okay. On that Friday, I have available um, 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 1 p.m., and 1.30 p.m. Would any of those work for a quick 15-minute call? Sure, let's do 10 a.m. Perfect. And just to confirm, uh, the full name for the invitation is Anthony, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Anthony, I have you down for uh, Friday, September 12th at 10 a.m. Central time. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Excellent. Your meeting is confirmed and a text confirmation has been sent. Thanks for your time. Looking forward to speaking. All right. Thanks, man. All right, so just like that, as you saw, as soon as I hit it, it's, it turned it to queued. And then after I ended the call, it automatically changed it to customer ended call, which is correct. And then automatically set the call status to completed. And then it went ahead and set the next call to in progress. Because as you said earlier, it's going to change it. It's going to look for calls that are on queued and it's going to change the status to in progress. And it's going to just go ahead and call that. And then in a little bit, it's also going to update saying, you know, whatever customer ended call and then completed once this person gets, you know, hangs up the call or whatever. So that is exactly how you set up a completely scalable, high volume, high trust, high reputation, outbound cold calling campaign. Now, if you want to get all of those files and get started in just five minutes, go to my school community. I'm going to upload everything into my templates tab. So just click on the, the post I'm going to make. And you can just click on the files and you just hit download and you can get started in literally five minutes. It's literally that easy, guys. And also, if you have any questions, make sure you go to the community tab. Feel free to ask me any question that you need here and I'll make sure to answer you and get you all the help that you need. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that, smash that subscribe button for more useful tutorials just like this. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.